In today's video, we're going to discuss the best smartphone camera for dummies. Stay tuned. What's going on guys, it's Quasi Dog here, and like I said before, today we're gonna be discussing what I think is the best smartphone camera for dummies. Now, I don't want to offend anybody when I say for dummies. All I mean and all I intend is a smartphone camera that's very easy to use and produces astounding or at least really good quality pictures with very little effort. And I think I found that for us today. Now, before I go into exactly what I think is the best camera, I do want to give an honorable mention to the LG G6, the V20, the iPhone 6S, the iPhone 7, and the Huawei P10. One thing that I sort of benefit from when it comes to my nine to five is I have access to all of today's smartphones because I sell them professionally. So I get to play with them on a daily basis. And all of those cameras or all of those phones that I mentioned before have great cameras in them but I don't think they're the best. Now, as an example, for those of you who follow my channel, you'll know that I had a very extensive look at the LG V20. I'll leave it up in the cards above. But with that, I actually used it as my exclusive camera on a family trip to Valcartier, Quebec. Now, it did a good job, and don't get me wrong, it's a great camera, but I found I had to shoot in manual mode to get the full value out of what it offered for an optics, and that's really not for dummies friendly. So fast forward to just last week, I actually just got back from Prince Edward Island, or PEI, it's of course an island in Canada, where I went on another family vacation. And this time I told myself, I'm gonna bring this camera that I'm shooting on right now, my Panasonic Lumix G7. I have my 25 millimeter F1.7 lens. I had bought it for the purpose of photography or for taking pictures. And I said, you know what? Now is the time. I wanna take pictures of my kids. I'm gonna take this camera. But then I also took my phone and I found because my phone worked so well for what I wanted it to do, this thing never came out of my camera bag. Now the smartphone that I think has the best camera on it for dummies or for novice users is going to be the one found in the Samsung S8 or of course the S8 Plus. On the back, this shooter has a 12 megapixel dual pixel sensor with an f1.7 aperture and reproduces some stunning photos. Now, the one thing that I liked about it, and this is actually going to extend away from just the camera for a moment, is the fact that the device is also IP68 certified, so dust and water resistant. This means that depending on your environment, for me as an example, with my Lumix G7, I didn't want to take it to the beach, I didn't want to take it into the pool, and I didn't want to take it out when it was raining because I don't want to actually break my one camera that I use for YouTube videos. So that was one reason that, that allowed me to start using the S8. And once I saw the picture quality that came out of that camera with auto settings, with HDR turned on, and then just using auto adjustments within the gallery, it was my exclusive shooter. So let's take a look at a couple example shots here and we'll see exactly why I love this so much. Now the very first picture we're gonna take a look at is actually the last picture that I took on my vacation. The sun was just peeking out from the clouds. I thought it looked gorgeous. So I honestly just aimed the camera up, took a shot, applied the auto adjustments and it came out great. So we can see that the sky itself is nice and vibrant blue. We've got a little bit of lens flare, but it's a nice lens flare. It's nothing that's really distracting from the picture. And the dynamic range in the clouds is simply breathtaking. I absolutely love this shot. Now this next shot is actually one of my most favorite shots I've ever taken as far as a candid portrait. And it's of course a portrait of my daughter. So we had gone to a family farm and it was a very long day. So Abigail was tired. She walked right over to where all this furniture was. She climbed up, sat down and just watched the tractors go by. We can see the full benefit of the F1.7 aperture here by having a nice blurred out foreground and background with her face being the primary subject in focus. Now with the HDR, we can see that we have very vibrant colors, but I don't think it's anything that's too overdone. Her cheeks are a little red, but she was out in the sun for a couple days, so that's more true to life color. 
but this is just a breathtaking photo. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Next is gonna be this creepy barn. And actually, it's really not a creepy barn. It was the barn that all the animals were in when we went on our trip. The nice thing is that I was able to focus on the actual light itself. And what the camera was smart enough to do was adjust the exposure to make sure that the light wasn't completely overblown. But it gave a nice sort of creepy feel and sort of underexposed the rest of the surroundings. You can see the extra glow coming out of those lights as well because of the HDR. So it's taking a few different photos and it's stitching them together to make sure that nothing is uh, underexposed or overexposed. And I really like the artistic feel. I find that the cobwebs in this are extraordinarily sharp as well. And that's something that I directly catch in my, in my attention. It's not the window, it's actually all the detail on those cobwebs. So this is another example photo of my daughter. Uh, we had come home from the beach, she was exhausted, so we just plopped her down on the bed and she went to sleep. Now, the craziest thing is, all the light in this picture is behind her, so this is backlit. We have a window that's gonna be kind of to the middle or a little bit off to the left, and then to the right, we had a lamp that was turned on. But there's really no lights in front of her. I focused on her face, and the craziest thing is, because of the HDR and the quality of the image processor both in the camera as well as what they have for the auto tuning is I was able to get a proper exposure on her face. It's not too dark. I don't even find it that noisy, but everything else is in focus and, and not overexposed. It's all, I just think it looks, it looks great. It's a fantastic photo. This again is another one of my favorites and I don't think any other camera on the market, as far as a smartphone camera, would do this good at a subject that was backlit, something that didn't have direct light directly on the subject's face or forefront when a picture was taken. And the last photo that I wanna show is this outdoor photo. So this, again, was in a location called the Garden of Hope in Prince of Rhode Island. And this is a lily pond. I got down kinda to uh, plant level, just shot a very quick photo. Again, all of these photos are uh, for dummies. They are on auto mode, they are with auto adjustments after the fact, and the clarity that is in this photo, I think, is simply breathtaking. We have a little bit of blur on the left-hand side with a subject that was close to the lens. I actually focused primarily on the pond here, so we've got focus kind of in the middle of the frame, uh, but with the HDR, it did a great job of really livening all of these colors, making sure everything was bright and crisp. We can still see the clouds, which is really great as well. Um, we see a little bit of sheen coming off the water, and then it bumped up that clarity just enough that it gives it that sort of artistic feel without making it look too overproduced. Uh, now, some people may not like this look. I really like this look. I find that this is one of the best looks if you're looking to share things on social media because it catches your eye so much. So there are some other images. I shared a few to my Instagram, so I'm gonna link that in the description below if you guys want to see some more photos. But like I said, all of these photos were with auto mode engaged as well as auto adjustments after the fact in the default Samsung Gallery app. All the photos I think turned out great. And if you're looking to jump into some cell phone photography, there's lots of phones on the market, there's lots of attachments that you can get with third-party lens adapters and lights and things like that, but you have to understand photography at least a little bit to really utilize all of that extra stuff. And you can do that with the S8 as well. It has a manual mode for when you become comfortable or you want to learn how to take full control over your photos and really get everything you can out of that camera. But truthfully, I think that just the auto settings are some of the best I've ever seen on any camera in multiple situations that I've ever used myself. Now, if you guys don't want to shoot in auto and you do want to try some manual and you do want to try some lens adapters and things like that, Peter McKinnon has actually just released in the last few days a really good video that I think you guys should check out. I'll leave it up in the cards above as well as in the description below. Take a look at that because there's some really, really great things that I think that you guys can learn. But if you want to be an auto shooter like me, at least for now, 
consider picking up the S8 because it's really, really good to just point, shoot, and get the best quality photos that I think you can get for dummies. So that's it guys. If you liked the video, consider giving it a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content in the future. Links will be in the description below for the phone, for the camera settings, for my Instagram, and a few other things. And until next time, my name is Quasi Dog. You guys have been awesome, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.